Hi, Tosh. Hi. You look pretty today. You always look gorgeous. If anybody's wondering why I never, I always have hats on, it's because when you're pregnant and home with a three-year-old, you're lucky to shower during quarantine. So, <laughs> well, hats. you look really cute in a hat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, so we have a few episodes that are out right now, and some of my friends from Florida have started listening. And the comment that comes up is, oh my goodness, she sounds so Jersey. And I'm like, she's Staten Island. (laughs) They need to do their research. (laughs) Very Staten Island or Brooklyn, whichever. (laughs) That's right. Not Florida. Yes, totally. (laughs) Um, Okay. So today we are going to dive again into uh, some specific venue, some venue discussion. Specifically, this one will be Crystal Plaza, which I've been to this space many times. It's gorgeous. Love it. Great reviews. All of our clients, so many of our clients have been here um, and ha- have used this venue for their big day. Um, so we would talk about, how, you know, how to open this up. And, and I, you know, we, there's so many different things you can say when, you, when you're trying to select a venue um, and think about. And I just said to myself, what was something unique and interesting or a fun fact um, that I don't know about you, Natasha, when you chose your space? So do you remember anything specific? I know where you got married at this point. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> we got um, married in a friend's restaurant. Yes. A fun fact was there was not a dance floor. So mm-hmm. we thought about this two days in advance. Mm-hmm. Where will we dance? It was the maitre d' called us and said, hey, what area of the restaurant do you want dancing on? It, mm-hmm. it was a carpeted restaurant. So we said, oh, okay. oh, wait, you can't dance on carpet. What are we going to do? And so Frank came up with the idea. Maybe they would do like rentals for mm-hmm. a dance floor. So we mm-hmm. rented a dance floor. It looked kind of like a 1970s um, uh, type of like pergo wood all put together, <laughs> you know, it wasn't very big, but we filled it. We had a lot of, we, as you know, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. I love it. I don't, okay. I, I actually don't have like a specific fact, I guess, but I just remember thinking I, I need a space where I don't want multiple weddings at once. And I know that a lot that goes for a lot of different venues, but, um, I don't think I would. I mean, I, I chose the space because I knew I knew the people. And, and for me, that was all I really wanted. I wanted to know the people. Um, but if they had multiple weddings happening at once, that probably would have been a deal breaker for me. I needed to be the star of the show. So, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> anyway, um, so thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, for today's podcast, we're going to be talking with Max Janoff from Crystal Plaza. Um, Crystal Plaza is one of the most popular wedding venues among our clients as well. You know, mm-hmm. so many of our Very clients elegant have gone there. space. Yes, beautiful. So thank you, Max, for joining us. Yeah. And welcome to our podcast. So you're engaged during the pandemic. <laughs> now what? Now what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna be talking to Max. Max, how do you say your last name? Janoff. Janoff from Crystal Plaza. And Max, uh, what's your role exactly at Crystal Plaza? Sure. So I'm a director of sales and a partner. So I'm fourth generation to Janoff to run the business. Uh I work with my father and my brother um, and my aunt. So we're all in the business together. And we, uh, you know, so we wear a lot of different hats, but I guess, I guess technical titles would be director of sales and managing partner. So you've been there a long time. I've been washing dishes since I was like 12 years old. So yeah, I've been there a long time. You grew up there. Oh yeah. How long have you guys been in business? You said four Uh, generations. Yeah. 1917 we opened. So 103 years. I did not know that. Yeah. So are there any of the original elements that you guys have restored, kept intact? Anything from 1917? Good question. So more specifically, um, in 1917, my great grandfather came to the country from Russia and he started the business in Newark and then we moved to Maplewood and then we've been in Livingston in the location we've been at since 1967. So as a company, 103 years, but in the same location for about a little over uh, 50, 55 years or so. Um, and it's, and that is a good question because we actually are under renovations right now. And a little bit of history of our venue in Livingston, New Jersey, it's actually a historic landmark. It was lived in the 1890s by a man named Stanford White, who's actually the original architect of Madison Square Garden. So there's some aspects of the building that we actually have to preserve for 
uh, historical reasons. And we're actually under renovations right now. And we're learning that as we go, it's pretty interesting as we knock down a wall and behind the wall is original stone from the, you know, 1800s. It's really crazy. That's very cool. And I knew you were under renovations because some of our couples that were, yeah, our couples that have we've mentioned met with that. Yeah. that have weddings coming up at your venue, they've all mentioned they're so excited. And oh my God, I just, I just thought of a fun fact, actually. Your venue is like my second choice when I was getting married. And I'm that's why I was looking at your oh. face. I'm like, did I meet him? But you know what? I might have <laughs> met you, but I have to say, um, I got really drunk on the best apple martinis. And I don't know who I, I don't, I remember who I met with there, but it was the, to this day, my husband and I still talk about it. And yeah, again. So it was, it was someone else's wedding you attended at Crystal Plaza. No, there was no weddings going on that day. But we we just went there. We, we you know, they, they they were amazing. They showed us the whole place. Um, I mean, I was embarrassed to keep asking for martinis, but I did. But it was like, <laughs> it, makes, it usually makes and, the price sound better. Right, exactly. I needed to yeah. relax. And they gave it to yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, keep going. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious where you ended up getting married. I got married at Southgate Manor. Beautiful. And again, I, yeah, I know Matt and, you know, so. So uh, venue is now, uh, you said you moved. So you're now in Livingston. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And you've been there since the 60s. Yes. How many weddings do you guys do in a year? Uh, It fluctuates, but usually we're usually around 150, 175 (coughs) weddings or so. Okay. So a good, solid, like busy season, your books through the weekend. Winter, yeah, it, maybe you do our, like one a weekend. It's our something core like that. Biz, It's our core business. Um, we do a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, um, a lot of uh, corporate events during the week. But weddings is definitely our bread and butter. Now, where you are right now is gorgeous. Are you there? No, this is actually my my house, my, oh. my parents' house. Yeah, we're all okay. is that, together. Is that oh, a la- nice. is that a lake or a pool behind you? That it's a it's a pool. The it's a it's a pool. So it's, oh it's now open. Because Can I we're like gonna have 80 degrees weather this weekend? So. Yeah, I heard. I want to like dive in. <laughs> yeah. So, so for our well, listeners, that's, that's what is your parents' address? <laughs> <laughs> Moving it's forward. near the crystal. So after after you visit the crystal, maybe you can come for a dip in the pool after your for tour. a little lap. Okay. If, if there's the same martinis, I'm in. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> so now, Max, walk us through. Now you are the director of sales. So mm-hmm. you are the point person when couples are coming to the venue. You're who they're meeting with, giving them the tour, giving them the history, and really selling them on the venue, right? Yes. What are your top, the, the things about Crystal Plaza that you are the most proud of? Clearly, this is this is a member of your family, this business, because you were born mm-hmm. into it. But mm-hmm. what are your favorite things about your venue that are really unique? Well, I the first thing I tell most clients is I hope food and service are important to you because those are the two things we do best. And you don't stay in business for 103 years in this in this industry without good good food and service. Just that cut and dry. Uh, you can't have a good party without good food. And if a guest feels like they're unappreciated, they're going to want to leave. Um, so those are two things that we harp on. And those are the things that we hold to the highest standard, our food quality, our food presentation. We want the food to look, uh, smell, taste, everything better than your than guests can expect. And our server to guest ratio, we usually do about two servers per table because we understand what it means to for uh, every guest to feel like a bride and groom. We don't want a guest to feel like a guest. We want it to feel like every guest, it's their big day. Um, so for me, I, I take uh, a lot. The certain the sa- the sales process for me is not really a sales process. It's me just explaining that we have great food and we have great service, and if those are important to you, then you shouldn't be going anywhere else because that's what we do. Got and it. are you are you there the the day or the night of? Yeah. So the thing that I take again very, um, you know, close to the chest is that I work with all my clients from the day they book to the last toast. I'm there the night of. So I don't consider myself the maitre d' anymore. I just have too many clients for me to actually be holding hands and walking Mm -hmm. the brides through down the aisle. So I work with my maitre d's to make sure that there's someone that they feel comfortable with actually communicating with them the day of, but I am there. Um, I'm usually like the head coach. If someone's talking to me, they they usually did something wrong. Um, And I'm making sure that everything's in place to make sure that the day could flow as smoothly as possible. Because at the end of the day, who knows your wedding better than the person you were most vulnerable with on your first visit? Uh, You know, I think these are the things we're interested in and, you know, this and that. And I have those notes. And those are things I can make sure execute when you're not thinking about it the night of. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. 
That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So walk us through. Um, it, it, we're pulling up into Crystal Plaza. What are we seeing? What does it look like? Uh, what's the experience like? Sure. So when you walk in the front doors, uh, well, first of all, I get a lot of times people drive right past it because we're in a residential area. Um, we're in a very unique space. We are grandfathered in a Livingston right in between a bunch of houses. It looks like a mansion because that's what it is. You drive right in, you feel like you're walking into your own home and that's how we want your guests to feel. Um, I always get the question, what happens if a guest arrives early? I say, well, what happens if they arrive early at your house? You're going to make them sit outside? Absolutely not. We invite them right inside. We let them take a seat with a glass of wine because that's how we want every guest to truly feel like they're coming to your home for your wedding. Um, so we make it feel that way. It's a very it's an it's a it's a grand but it's a comfy lobby right you you your guests feel like they should be there not like overwhelmed by it all you're mm -hmm. greeted uh by white glove butlers you get invited either inside the cocktail lounge or you can go to the coat check there's an upstairs beautiful staircase as your first enter as well uh but there's a lot of different kind of ways you can you can branch off from the main entrance way but usually the cocktail hour is the first place guests would enter into wow it makes me want to come <laughs> i haven't been out but <laughs> that's my first stop yeah, it's going to be a good party when this is all over. We're definitely going to throw a party. Yeah, for sure. Um, Food-wise, what do you have? Like, what, what are your best dishes? What kind of food? Do you accommodate different cultures? That sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, without before I dive into actual the items I like, because I, I know what I, I like in terms of our menu, we've got a great menu, um, very multicultural. But at the same time, we don't try to do things we don't think we could do. Um, a very... We, in the past, we hadn't done a lot of South Asian weddings. That's mm -hmm. becoming very popular. Um, in our area, there's a lot of South Asian weddings coming, and those are great weddings. Lots of people, fun, colorful weddings. But to do South Asian, Asian dishes is very difficult, and you have to be a pro at that. So mm -hmm. we usually don't try to even do that. We will bring in mm -hmm. outside caterers to do those things. But other than that, we do feel comfortable with almost every other cuisine. Um, our chef feels very comfortable with Italian, American, Spanish, uh, Japanese, all different cuisines. And we combine those into a cocktail hour to give you a more elegant version of like an Epcot around the world experience in cocktail mm -hmm. hour. Um, we also provide, so we're the only venue in the country that has non-kosher kitchen, kosher and glock kosher. So we could provide all levels of uh, for Jewish cuisine, uh, which gives us a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of clients that come to us and say, wow, not only am I getting this great venue, but I don't have to work with a with a kosher caterer. We could work with you directly. Just makes their life so much easier. And even going further than that, for the first 85 years we were in business, we were only kosher catering, but we were still doing Italian weddings, Russian weddings, Spanish weddings. People didn't care because the food was that good. Then we were able to bring shrimp and lobster into the mix and it made things even better. I'm sorry. Do you try to yeah. sway your your clients to sort of have a um, if they're if they obviously if they're open to it to have a variety of dishes um, at their wedding? I know that some some couples it's you know Italian only or you know yeah, Asian no. only and and you know for couples like that, how do you respond? Do you do you let it be or do you kind of try to you know open their their minds up a little bit to having different dishes and experiencing what you were mentioning before? Really good, really good question, mostly because you, you hit on Italians and that's usually the one we have the biggest, biggest issues with. Italian. I know, I'm Italian. Want, I, that's only, why I'm asking the question. All, all they want is Ita <laughs> Italian food. That's all they want. Right? Very close-minded so, by family. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're not going to generalize all Italian people, mm. but I will My say family. for the most part, they typically just want Italian food. And I usually have to say, well, let's think about your guest count. I just want to, I want to present ideas to you. And if you say no, the answer is no, but I've seen a lot of weddings. I've seen what works and doesn't work. And I always use that, that saying, um, throw in a quesadilla bar, right? Who doesn't yeah. like quesadillas, right? Mm -hmm. We could do the pastas and the cheeses and all the, all the meats, throw in a quesadilla bar, throw in something different, throw in Spanish tapas station, because people do enjoy that just because it's not from <laughs> Sicily or the Sicilian region, whatever it is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I always recommend that one thing that I'm really pushing that I think is a huge trend is pairing stations. We call it mixology station. So if you're doing a tequila bar, we pair it with like a, t uh, guacamole station, or if you're doing sushi, we tell you to do sake next to it because people want to drink in cocktail hour and people usually are like, I can't think what to drink. I'll just get a beer or I'll just have a glass of red wine. Right. But now we're saying, mm -hmm. oh, well, if you're eating, you know, guacamole, you should be drinking tequila, right? That makes sense. So our chef has paired dishes to match different drinks, ah, um, which cool. is something that, you know, as soon as I start talking to clients about that, they've never heard of anything like that before. Mm -hmm. It's a full experience. Oh, yeah. So I delved like right into food, but I really want to know more about what it looks like in the, in the venue. Do you have more than one reception room? Um, do you do on-site ceremonies and where are people getting ready? That sort of thing. 
Really good question. So that is really, and, and I can't go too much into detail about the construction because we are, uh, we haven't formally announced what those pieces are, but I'll give you a couple of hints. Uh, pretty much what we're doing is we're building a new indoor ceremony room um, and, and bridal suites. So exactly what you just hit the hit on the head. Um, we, we know what our weaknesses were in the past and there's pretty much four pieces that we're putting in four phases of the construction, um, that I, without sounding biased, I don't know what a flaw in our venue would be at this point because we're taking care of all the flaws that could have been before. Wait, so what were your um, weaknesses in the past? The, <laughs> the, well, well, for, for one, for one, one, one thing I'll tell you that I haven't announced before, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys, um, cause you guys have worked with us a bunch of times with the crystal. And I'm sure you remember that if you're bringing your, um, if you're bringing your guests around to the garden, you know, you have to walk around the space, right? You have to walk around yeah. the venue. Mm -hmm. okay. We're creating a corridor so you can go from the front door right out to the garden, which is such a small detail. But think about that. That was something that you as a camera crew and as, as guests potentially have been like, well, damn, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to lug all my stuff around the yeah. venue or if it starts raining, you got to run back inside. You know, those are little things that now we're, we're accomplishing and we're fixing to make things uh, a little bit better. Cool. That's great. And you do outdoor ceremonies, correct? Yeah. So, so we do have the garden. Um, we do also currently have an indoor ceremony space. So, you know, we can make decisions the day of, um, I don't like flipping the ballroom. Uh, if somebody were to say, Oh, I, you know, I like your ballroom better than your indoor ceremony room. I would still say, well, when it isn't better to keep your ceremony, your ballroom a surprise with the renovations, the reason for the renovation is the new ceremony room we're putting in. It's going to be the most, uh, stunning. I mean, again, I, I want to talk about it more, but the one hint I'll give you is the, the biggest trend that we see coming is, uh, natural light. Mm -hmm. so um we're putting in a glass roof um, it's also it's brides brides who are listening natural light is the most flattering so yeah. definitely a plus yeah so um we we've worked with uh, some photographers and lighting uh, experts to make sure that um i've heard <laughs> listen i don't know things about anything about photography but i hear that three points of shadow i guess is something in photography where you don't want three shadows so we're working where on where to put windows and where we need to put illumination and um it's going to be a really pretty room, you know, 20 foot stone, um, peak ceilings. It's uh, really oh, wow. special. Very pretty. That's great that you guys are staying cognizant of what its purpose is and that it is a highly photographed type of oh, oh, space. Ab so absolutely. really smart. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. You're, the, the only thing from your wedding that lives forever is your photos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your video. And your video. And your video. <laughs> and your video. Come on. <laughs> and, and what about the suites? Where, where will they get ready? What will that be like? So we're creating uh, quite large suites uh, so you can have all day access. Um, we're allowing uh, the couples to come as early as they want. Uh, previously in the past, our suites haven't had windows, which I know for photography and videography is an issue where right? you want that natural light for the makeup pictures and everything. Um, so we're going to have tons of windows. Um, again, I can't go into too much more about those, but uh, we will be releasing very shortly what uh, some renderings of what that's going to look like. Um, the reason why we've held off and we've had dates for announcing this and dates and pushed it back and pushed it back is because of the whole COVID situation and, and governor Murphy shut down construction. And now we're about, we're getting, we're, we're getting approved to start back up soon. And, and so there's so many moving pieces that we just want to make sure that we know when this is going to get done so we can announce it. You know, so you, officially. you did break ground on the renovations. You're just, oh, you're I was there today. right now. They, oh, okay. No, no, no. They're, they're working awesome. on today. I mean, the the part that they're working on first was our offices. So maybe uh, maybe you remember when you came in for a tour, if you sat in one of the offices. I did. That they ripped out all the roofs. I mean, everything's gone mm. there. It's crazy. It was really cool to see. You must awesome. be so excited. It's very exciting. And I'm, and I'm using this as a silver lining uh, because obviously COVID is a miserable situation. But in the history of the Crystal Plaza, we will never have the opportunity to do construction without having to stop for events in a four month period, which we're going to have now. Right. Right. Now right. we could be as messy as we want. We tell the construction go as crazy as you want. It doesn't matter because we don't have to, we don't have to clean up for clients, which was supposed to make the process last so much longer because not only did they have to build every day and they'd have to clean up and then set it up, build, clean up, set up, build, clean up. Now mm -hmm. we're just saying make a mess. If you walked in my venue right now, you would think that I don't know what you think. It's a it's a mess right now, but that's good. Yeah, that's a good it's thing. it's so weird to have time. 
right? Oh yeah, I've it's never. Like, I, who has time? I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just very strange. <laughs> but yeah, you make you make an opportunity you know. out of it, you know, like you or, guys are doing. So, you know, what I'm noticing though, and and on a complete side note, is speaking of time and COVID and you know everybody's circumstances right now, aren't you feeling like? we sort of fill our days with stuff. We figure it out. Like we, we find things to fill our days. So there are days where I feel so overwhelmingly busy, busier than I've ever been in my entire life because I think that's our human nature. Yeah. We, we create- We need to do it. Mm-hmm. We create a space that is constantly doing things, thinking about things, accomplishing things. It's very hard to not do. It's very hard to actually just- Mm-hmm. Sit still. So completely unrelated, but I just wanted to get that out because it's been yeah. on my mind. You know. Anyway. Well, listen, we can relate it to this because clearly, you know, you can make something out of anything. You know, an opportunity can arise. So, um, that's great. That's great hey, that, that you guys are doing that. Max, you guys are a one venue a day, uh, one wedding a venue, one wedding a day venue. <laughs> <laughs> so we do offer two time slots in a day. They never overlap. You never even know they're there, especially with oh, these sweet okay. options. But we do offer the option to, to you know, buy out the whole day. for. So if it is important to someone, great, buy it. You know, you can take out the whole day. But if it, but if it's not important to you, which I usually tell people, um, if I usually tell my clients that if it was my party, um, I wouldn't buy out the whole day because I genuinely see how we operate and it's not an issue. Mm-hmm. So what are the time blocks and could you walk us through that? Yeah. So we, we have three time slots in a day. So it's an afternoon, evening, and twilight. Afternoon um, does not have an option to go later than five o'clock. doesn't matter what time you start. It doesn't matter what time you end as long as it doesn't end after five o'clock. Mm-hmm. Evening events have to start anytime after 6 p.m. doesn't matter if you want to start at 7, 7, 30. That's fine. But six o'clock would be the earliest. And the twilight means you get the whole day. You could start at Two o'clock, you could start at 11 a.m. You could start at 7 p.m., but no, there's no other events that day. Okay. If it's a six o'clock start time, what time can the couple get there? It's a great question. So with the new suites that we're putting in, the suites are only guaranteed for evening events. So they could still get there at 9 a.m. and spend the whole day there um, without any interruption. We're building a third suite option that would be for the afternoon client. Okay. Okay. Are suites additional for a couple? No. It it comes with the use of- of the yep, venue with attendance and we serve brunch. Ooh. Wow. Uh, what's the projected date that you guys are going to, uh, you know, open with the renovation, uh, COVID aside, you know, with, with the renovations, what's your projected date for reopening? It's a, it, yeah. I would say that, um, my safe date right now is December. Great. I think it's, I, it should only get better from, from there with, with all this time. Can we just like visit? One day. Stop by. Stop can by we just for go- sure. I'd, I'd love to show you around. Can I, can I just, you know, sneak in there? I, I, lo- I, I, love, so I love the, yeah. what we're doing. I mean, I would love to show you guys around. It's great. You're here. You're here like a timid knock. It'll be me. I'm just going to sneak in. Yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. Well, the roof is open. So you could just like, uh, I don't know, like come in from the top. Fall through the glass. Oh God. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I want to say I, one of the clients that I met with, it, it, it was Crystal Plaza. They are getting married at Crystal Plaza, but so did their parents. Mm. Does that make, does that ring a bell to you? You've been it, you've grown up in the venue, not, so it, I'm it sure you've had pretty multiple often. generations. Okay, mm. yeah, it's it's really special, and and we even see we've seen families that we've done bar mitzvah, then they got married, then the kids bar mitzvah, then their wedding, and now we're doing their. I mean, the amount of generations that have been loyal to us in this community, it, it's really special, but it speaks to what we provide for them. And, and it's something that my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father preached to us is leave your guests with more than they ever expected. Right. If they, if they asked for this, give them one more because you can't, because it, it, there's, there, there's no value to making someone that happy. There just isn't. And there, mm-hmm. it goes so much further recommendations for us. Yeah. We, we love the knot. We love wedding wire. We love New Jersey bride, but word of mouth is, is our bread and butter. Somebody I mean, has a great like- experience with us. That's it. And what's your feeling? You know, we have discussions here too. I mean, what do you think about the industry in the sense of uh, the continuation of weddings when it comes to guest sizes? Do you think all these things are going to, do you think that this COVID situation has permanently, and listen, I know, I know that this is just like, we're having casual conversation. Nobody really knows the answers to any of this, but in your opinion and being in the industry for a long time and now experiencing what we're experiencing, you know, 
uh, as a whole. Do you think that this situation, this COVID situation, is going to permanently change the wedding industry in terms of how people, how people view, uh, imagine what their wedding is going to be like moving forward and planning their weddings moving forward? Do you think there's going to be a 350 guest uh, weddings that you guys are going to be booking? You know, things like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's the million dollar question. Um, it's for me the the wedding industry. You could rip up any piece of paper you've ever read or any blog you've ever read. It's 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 over. Everything's completely changed. Um, so that already happened. What that means moving forward, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know one thing that we've made abundantly clear to government officials that have stopped in on these Zoom calls with the venues because we get we get uh, Congress people, uh, we get assembly women, we get a lot of people on these calls. We've made it very clear to them is that we don't want to open unless we can open and do events. What that means is if you tell us we can do 50 people with social distancing and masks, you're wasting our time. We're not going to open for that because th- because that's not realistic. We are telling them that they have to open on a percentage capacity. Okay. Not to, to us as a smaller we, – we consider ourselves a smaller venue. We could fit up to 400 people, but our average size party is 175. Mm-hmm. So if we want them to open with a 50% capacity – we think that that's a, a fair number. The reason why it doesn't hurt us as bad is because we are a smaller event. So we are, you know, I do think that their smaller events are going to become more trendy. I'm getting a lot of increase for 80 to 100 people, which I'd never seen before. It's mostly 150 to 200 that we get. Um, so I think that the average size party is going to drop. But that hurts some of the much larger venues more than us. And, you know, these are great people, great venues. Um, uh, you know, I don't have to use any names in particular. The Venetian, The Grove. These mm-hmm. are venues that we love, that we really appreciate that have such big ballrooms that if they only say 50 people can go to a venue, that's not fair to them. Right, it needs awkward. to be a percentage capacity. So that way those venues can still socially distance appropriately because they have bigger ballrooms. Um, and, and, and that's really what we're making pretty clear to them is that, you know, if they said 50 people to us, it wouldn't hurt us as much as some other venues. So that's why we're all kind of sticking together there and saying, you know, it needs to be a percentage capacity. Yeah. I really like this alliance that you guys have formed. So you guys get together periodically um, with all of the main venues in the area and you discuss because it, it, it's great that you unite in terms of how you're handling this with this is you, completely like nobody has experienced this territory. Mm-hmm. So nobody really knew how to handle this. Do you postpone? Do you refund? How do you pay your staff? How do you keep going? Keep the keep the lights on. So it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's a very weird place to be yeah. in, but because you've formed this alliance, you can unite. Is, have you found that a lot of the different venues have come up with a plan together and they're handling the procedures similarly or it's, it's that, all over That's the why we did it. No, that's okay. why we did it. We, we didn't want a client to think that one venue was taking advantage of them or the other wasn't because we genuinely are just trying to do the right thing. And what the right thing is, 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 is whatever helps everybody, because this is such a unique situation. There's no, there's no textbook for this, right? Right. And being in business for 103 years, my dad has stories from his dad and grandfather about World War II and the Great Depression and Vietnam. And they say this, those were little nothing compared to this. And that is crazy to consider. The Great wow. Depression doesn't even put this in the same category. So it's just something so different and so unique that. You know, I hope when history looks back at what we did, people are going to say, you know what, they did the right thing and they were mm-hmm. a, a fair process. I know it's hard to understand right now for a lot of clients, but I hope when people look back, they're going to say, wow, they actually were trying to do the right thing. And what we are doing is we're postponing events. You know, mm-hmm. it's postponed, don't cancel. I, <laughs> I've said it in every interview I've done is you can't cancel love. I didn't make it up. They're not made it up. Right. But mm-hmm. it, it's true. You can't cancel love. You're still going to have a wedding. You're still going to have a party. Let's work together to find a date find a guest count that you feel comfortable with. We understand that people are going to be traveling, but you know, without sounding too harsh, you know, to the people that talk about grandparents not being able to come to the wedding, that might be the case for the next two years or so, you know, think about until we get a a vaccine, you know, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a horrible situation. I hate to be the person that brings that up, but that is a, a serious thing to consider is that there for the average guest, it's going to get better quickly. And we're going to be able to do some great events for a lot of great people. Yeah. But unfortunately, guests with underlying conditions and 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 um, elderly guests, there probably will be some more, you know, worry about getting them there. You know, we're working with some vendors to put in uh, camera systems so we can do live feeds during weddings. You know, we're, we're trying to get as creative as possible because this isn't ending. You know, as much as we want to start doing events soon, even when we start doing events, it's not over. 
Mm-hmm. It's not over. It's not over until there's a vaccine. And we all, we all understand that. Yeah. The yeah. cameras that you're speaking of, those would not be fixed. Those would be just brought in by various vendors. Is that right? Set up for the, for the event. We're, or you're looking we're into thinking investing about installing in your own system. It. Installing them. Yeah. Yeah. We're thinking about installing it, putting in the ceiling, you know, because I would imagine why wouldn't somebody use that? You know, if there's a guest that if there's one guest that can't come that wants mm-hmm. to see it, it's worth it. Yeah. The the only issue that I see with that, and I've seen it with some other venues and when they offer their own lighting packages and such is technology is always growing. So yeah. it's difficult to put something in and put the investment in. And then here you are with dated equipment eventually. Oh, yeah. You know, right now it's so smart of you. So smart of you because Everybody is going to need this, having yeah. a, any sort of a gathering. Well, does live pic- is live picture studios going to be offering this service to their clients? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we are. All right. Yeah, well, yeah now we're that's talking. Exactly right. Let's make a deal. Inside, inside scoop. Let's make a deal. <laughs> inside scoop. And, you know, it's, you, you can't just stay in the same place. You have to always be growing. You have to listen to what people need and truly hear them. And we've been talking to so many brides and and grooms lately, some that are existing clients, others that are booking their weddings, but everybody's in a very uncertain place. But one thing that's come out over and over and over is, well, we don't know the guest count. We don't know what it's going to be like. Um, We want our wedding. We want to have several hundred people. So you have to offer a service where if it is a, a compromised amount of guests, how do you include everybody? How do you accommodate? How do you move yeah. forward, mm-hmm. you know? And some yep. of our clients have actually gone the whole Zoom route. They're doing Zoom weddings <clears throat> uh, completely in their own home. Everybody will be will be tuning in. So we're, we're in the middle of working on uh, something to accommodate that as well. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you guys are always forward thinking. I just, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how that works because I feel like there, there probably could be a very creative and you know, I, I don't want to compare it to like a sports game, but like if you really had like a crew dedicated to a live feed, it could be pretty interesting for people yeah. to watch. It could be it's really, so, really It's so cool. new. I mean, it's that's, that's I mean, who who doesn't want to see something that's I would like to see that. Like you describing uh, that right now, I want to see it. And it's, it's, yeah, like a, it's I, you know, <laughs> that's right. It's, it's something and, new. And it has to be done where there is there's somebody at the headquarters who's who's actually doing like they do on it CNN. Could be, it could you have be somebody really, who's handling the switching and who you're seeing at what point and how do you make you that get, call? You you ladies should be in the background like narrating like, oh, they're going for the shrimp again. Like they had four <laughs> shrimp cocktails already. <laughs> like, like, watch out. Watch out. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're Very so lucky like to do go you, to the chair. And you're like, do you you're so lucky you get to eat that food constantly. <laughs> lucky or is it it's, it's my downfall on, dude, it i mean there's two ways of looking at it i guess <laughs> yeah I, I, it's so hard to go on a diet when i see this food every day it's are ridiculous. you all going through like withdrawals from your chef <laughs> oh, i miss i miss paul so much i miss paul <laughs> hysterical when we finally come out of this quarantine the way i mean if people didn't know i was pregnant i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just started last week. I don't know if you guys watch Chopped, but we've been doing Chopped challenges at our house. Um, ah. We're doing So I won last week and tomorrow, uh, Friday, my brother and sister are going. So follow me on Instagram. We're going to be doing it live. It's uh, it's pretty interesting watching cool. this happen. So Very we're, we're cool. Just trying to keep our, yeah, we're trying to keep ourselves busy. Gosh, this is, this is great. I love how you guys are handling that. How do you handle what we didn't get to was guest count? Like oh, if somebody yeah. is down, yeah, yeah. downsizing their wedding and they're going from – you know, 175 and now they're saying 80. What are you doing about that? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's the most common question. And mm-hmm. to all my friends that I, uh, yeah, I have a lot of friends who are getting married elsewhere, right? Got, you know, do whatever they want. And then they're going to marry New York city and all these places. And they're asking for my advice, Max, what are we doing here? Our venues saying this, that. And I say, the only question that I would be asking at this time is what happens if I have a lower guest count, right? I guaranteed you 200 people. That might not be the case now for government reasons or travel restrictions. What is the case? And Mm -hmm. what we're doing um, is a process that we've done for years for corporate events um, because it's hard for a corporate event to guarantee a guest count. So what we do is called a sliding scale where the guests no longer have to guarantee a minimum. We are offering, um, you know, depending on what their guest count ends up being, and we're breaking it out for them. We're sending them an email if they ask for it. 
here's the different price points for different guest minimums. Oh, you know, okay. if you have, if you have, if you originally guaranteed 225, okay, this is the price, but if it goes to 200 as a minimum, 175, 150, 125, all the way down to a hundred. And then the hundred price includes zero to a hundred people as just a lump sum. This is the number. If we have to do less than a hundred person event, the, the, the real issue right now. And, and it's something that we're dealing with is a lot of people, unfortunately are going under financial hardships yeah. right now um and there's a lot of deposits due for events down the road even for 2021 yeah what are you doing about that that's it's, so- it's such a hard process because you know we're trying to be conscious of the situation but there's also things that you know we are we are offering smaller deposits we're offering extended deposits mm-hmm. uh but it that is a hard situation is asking for a lump sum of money in these circumstances but at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, it's money that they should have been expecting to have to pay, but not expecting to be under these circumstances. So we're trying to be as cognizant as possible, but it's a, it's a case by case basis. And that's, that's honestly been the part that's hit the home the hardest is, you know, postponing, we get it, you know, we have to start postponing events, but deposits do is like, I, you know, I, it's hard to put down a big number for a, an event, but if you're capable of doing it, God bless you. If you need to break it up, we're happy to work with you. It, it's, it's a tough, it, that those are the postponements and the deposits have been the hardest part about everything yeah. because we want to, we want to be fair to the client, but um, there are also deposits that we've been expecting to receive. I would Got say, it. Tosh, would you say that that was probably similar for our organization as well? Yeah. With, yeah. We went through a, a – it, it was a cash flow thing because you you project what you're bringing in for for the deposits – and then, you know, you have everything structured around that. So now you have an event that's, that's been pushed a, back 12 yeah. months from now. So that's affecting the cash flow. So then it yeah. came into, do you really dip into savings and keep pulling, keep pulling? But then luckily the government loans came out to really step in and, and help get through. So what we came up with was for our clients, we offered, if they're postponing their date, they're also postponing their due date which for us, uh, everything must be paid within a month before the wedding. And we've loosened up the deposit quite a bit. And let me talk about the deposit first, and then I'll talk about the, you know, when the final balance is due. So typically, we've always said 50, 50% down, 50% a month before the wedding. And everybody's in such a different financial place right now. So then we changed it to, that was op- that's option one, which some people are still taking advantage of that because as you said when you when you're planning a wedding you usually have a fund for that so they sometimes already have the funds and then yeah. it's just off their chest they don't have to worry about it option b is 25% down 25% uh usually like in 60 days uh unless their wedding is in 2022 we may do 6 months later it's a reasonable amount to get that 50% deposit um and then we started monthly payments dispersing it uh, if it's 12 months, nine months, 18 months, doing, breaking it up into equal installments. And then that couple can pay a, a even amount every month. Nobody's taking advantage of that. <laughs> I think yeah. we had one person take advantage of that. People just don't want to be bothered with a monthly payment. Yeah. Right. Um, and then in terms of like when your deposit is due, I think we were very, very forgiving and very giving in that, <clears throat> in that way, pushing everything until a month before the wedding. But we have offered clients, if they do want to pay everything off in full prior, that helps us out. Um, so we've offered them a bit of a discount mm-hmm. Interesting. to yeah. do that. So it's, um, I, I think everybody's been very understanding. We have as well. And uh, yeah. again, we, we had to put something in place that made sense for everybody right away, just like you, just like all of the other venues yeah. that, you're, that you're working with. And before so. this too, I, you know, um, I, I was curious, um, before this whole situation occurred, um, how, how far in advance do your couples actually typically secure you a year and a half year? Yeah. I, I, I would say be, before COVID, um, it was trending down uh, big time. It was, uh, you know, usually I would say that if you read the, the average blog or wedding book, they'd probably tell you 10 to 12 months. Right. Mm-hmm. I I've been seeing six to eight, six to eight months, um, was, was pretty common. A lot of, su- a lot of quick weddings were happening. Um, I relate that to, uh, the apps of the world, Bumble and hinge and things like that, that have changed yeah. the dating game. 
but I'm not a doctor. I don't have any research to uh, <laughs> back that up, but, <laughs> yeah. but that is just kind of what I've seen. But with, with this new COVID, I see a lot of people that I, I think that could trend back up big time. I could see people just saying, we do want to get married. We walk, want to lock in a date that we feel safe locking in. Um, I hope it doesn't go up too much um, in terms of, you know, I don't, I hope it doesn't go back to the 12 to 14 range month, but uh, I think 10 months is, is a, is a good time frame. That's usually what I recommend for my clients. The mm-hmm. issue right now for clients that are looking for next year is with all these postponements, dates next year are just disappearing, right? It hurts the venues because right. now we're losing for revenue the new, for, for the new clients. Next, you mean, right. So yeah. the new clients that come in, you know, they might come in one day and I have availability for three dates. And then the next day they call, I said, I just had three people postponed to those right. dates. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, it, it's tough for them as well because it's trying to, uh, trying to work within this and kind of weave throughout this for a new client. It's very difficult. Yeah. Stre- stressful on the couple too, trying to align mm-hmm. to line. Uh, we had a, one of our, uh, planners that we work with quite often on the podcast. And she was saying that um, it, it, it she was faced with telling her clients, you got to pick and choose. Like, who is your must-have vendors and who are you willing to forgo? Because trying to align everybody across the board was getting more and more difficult mm-hmm. if and they had also, a particular date. We're also getting a lot of um, – I, I don't know if you've heard – your clients say things like this to you before, perhaps you did. Um, we're, we're getting some of our clients, they're, they're splitting days. Well, they're, they're considering having like a ceremony on one day, a small ceremony, and then just, you know, the reception. So if in your case, I don't know how you guys would, would work that out because if they're having the ceremony with you on site or having, or the original plan was having the wedding there all day. And I now it's- that if that would affect you much, because I think think those are mostly religious ceremonies that are happening. Pri- of, have you ha- have you talked to any clients that are doing their ceremony at a venue on a separate day? Because usually it's a religious thing, right? I'm not sure. Well, well, if if a, if a if a client wanted to do the venue, like use our space for a ceremony and then a reception a different day, mm-hmm. it doesn't. It would hurt us because then we have to book two days for them because we right. only do one event at a time. Um, what I did get actually right before I jumped on this, I, I got a new inquiry. For, so Murphy officially postponed the executive order to June 5th, I think is the date, right? They asked, they said, okay, June 6th, we want to do a five-person ceremony in your garden. We want to book a five-person ceremony in your garden. And then a year later, we're going to do our one-year wedding anniversary as a party um, on that same day. Yeah, things like and that. I, it, that's and I was, what like, I was wondering. Hell yeah. Like, I love that. Let it, let's do that. Let's, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the date that, that, that June date for free. Let's just worry about the wedding. And, sure. um, you know, I'm, I'm going to read, I'm going to have a call with them later, but I, that, that email really got my, got me thinking. I mean, I had another one, a prom, actually my high school, Morristown Beard, uh, got really creative because a lot of proms have to cancel, but that hurts. That doesn't hurt. You know, they don't want to cancel for financial. It's not like, oh, we're saving money. It hurts the seniors and the juniors that it's their last prom. So what they thought about doing was a party at their school the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which is, is you know, everyone's back from college all the time. So it'd be like a senior kind of party. And I was like, what is what a great idea. And those are the kind of forward thinking people that are going to help this industry get through this and, yeah. and help those kids, right? Um, you know, th- they cool. understood it. They're saying, we don't want to cancel this, right? It's not about saving money or, you know, well, we don't have to do a prom this year. It's about, well, damn, you know, these seniors don't get their prom and we want to do something nice for them. So those kind of things I, uh, I appreciate because I've got so much on my plate. I don't have time to kind of brainstorm and, and these people brainstorming for me, it helps. Any advice that you'd give couples right now? Advice? Uh, tr- tr- I mean, it, it sounds crazy, but trust the professionals. Um, I have so many clients that email me and call me thinking that they know me or acting like they're Dr. Fauci and they have dates available. And I'm just like, guys, I promise I've had more calls and I've gotten more information than you. I know more about the industry. I've seen more. Just, just, I'm not trying to hurt you. Just listen. And and we're going to get through this. And is as hard as that is because it's hard to trust people nowadays with all these fake news and whatever it's coming out of everywhere. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just trust your professionals. They're, they're trying to help you. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Great. You've been awesome. So yes. nice to meet you. And uh, nice we've heard you. about you for years now and work with so many couples. 
that work with you. So it's really nice to put like a face with. Absolutely. This is fun. I mean, Max, Max, come on. (laughs) Were we like the best peeps that ever? Best. Yeah, absolutely. I knew it. I knew it. This is my first, I've done a bunch of calls and lives. This is my first podcast. And definitely first with like a with a, a a film crew and camera crew, and I love working with you guys. I mean, you guys pretty much reinvented the uh, same day edits. Be honest, sure. were I, you like, oh, are they just gonna like ask me fifteen of the same questions, like like list it off? We're not no, like that. We're I, cool. No, 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 but I I <laughs> definitely didn't know what we were gonna talk about. I figured it was gonna be COVID based, but then you started talking about food. I was like, all right, I could talk to these people. Yeah, like, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Totally. You know, you know, you know the way to my heart. Wait, what's your nationality? So, I mean, technically Russian, but fourth fourth generation American. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I, I would I I am Russian. Oh, and and the mustache. This isn't like a thing. It's uh, it's I'm in solidarity with my <laughs> clients. I'm not shaving until we do another event. Wait, but do you not grow facial hair? You only grow a mustache. What? I, I love mean, this. I've, I've been shaving my beard. I'm doing the mustache, so okay. that way people are like. Why do you look like an idiot? And I'm like, well, <laughs> my clients can't have events, so I feel their pain. Are you cutting your own? Are, what's the guy's situation with the haircuts? Are you cutting your own hair right now? Uh, my brother actually cut my hair um, a few he weeks ago. He did a good job. Re- yeah, I was going to say, you, you look horrible, pretty. You trim. <laughs> he did a horrible job the first time. I mean, my hair was, I don't know how. I've never had a mullet before, but it looked like a mullet. <laughs> and then he tr- we, we decided to actually try, like, not at night. And uh, he he did decent. He did decent. I was gonna yeah. say you look pretty. You know, you, you look good. You look pretty trimmed up over I look, there. I was I, like, I, what's I going on? Just, I thought you were. I thought you were just gonna stop it. You look pretty. <laughs> you cleaned <laughs> up. <laughs> you clean up nice. Now here's the here's the million dollar question. Now when your mustache, let's hope it doesn't have to get too long. We're back to business like <laughs> soon, right? But let's say that mustache is getting long. Are you doing handlebars or are you gonna do yes. the, cur- the curly cues? Yes. So I, yes. I have trimmed it. I, I did, good, I, Tosh. It, it, it was starting to go over my lip, so I started trimming. I was like, that's terrible. I, it was like waking me up in my sleep. It was scaring the children. I had to shave it. But but I am working on the twirls. The twirls are something that's coming okay. along. It, it, it'll be there. Well, thank you for, for coming on, and thank you for the invite to come swimming in your pool. We'll be there. Yes. Um, and, you know, get your chef over because we'll come for brunch as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's do it. I'm down. Love it. Oh my well, god! Thank you so much. Please stay safe. This is and fun. Keep in mm-hmm. touch. We're here. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank if you. you. Guys need anything? Let us know. And uh, thanks for having us. We love working with Live Picture Studios, and hopefully, we'll be celebrating soon. We do too. Can't yes. wait. Thank you. All stay right. well. Stay you safe. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, that was so fun. That was. I liked uh, him. <laughs> yeah, completely. Learned a lot, like usual. And Thank for those Jen. listening, um, follow Crystal Plaza on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, and visit their website at crystalplazagroup.com. Guys, please make sure to visit our website, podcast at livepicturestudios.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at livepicturestudios.com. And you can also email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything that you'd like us to share. That would be great if we get your ideas, your feedback. Uh, We very much appreciate that. And come on and talk to us too. That's right. Be a guest. (laughs) This podcast has been produced by Kuali, Natalia Delgado, Marcia Rosa, and Mark Falcon. Our editor is Nicole Palmetti, and music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. This episode is powered by K-Vibe Go Live. Until next time, guys. Bye. Happy planning. Hang in there. Take care. Stay safe. Be well. (laughs) 